So you've built an amazing AI agent and it's time to launch it into the world. Except there's one feature missing. The agent needs to connect to some kind of third party service. And unfortunately, it's a third party service that isn't natively supported by VoiceFlow. Now in the past, you might have to go and get the API for that service and manually add it to your agent step. And if you need 17 different endpoints connected to your agent, it's gonna be a long day. But luckily, you don't have to do that anymore. Let me introduce you to MCP. MCP, or Model Context Protocol, is a way for your AA agents to connect to third-party services. Think of it as a layer that kind of sits between it and APIs, except the layer speaks the same language as your AA agents. So rather than having to go and manually connect a bunch of different API endpoints, your agent can just be like, hey, MCP server, how's your day going? And the MCP server can be like, it's great. I have access to these 14 tools. What would you like to use? Now, you can self-host an MCP server. In fact, all of these different tools already have MCP servers available. You can get them from this link on the screen. Or you can use a tool like Zapier MCP. If you're a beginner, I would recommend using something like Zapier MCP because it lets you get up and running without downloading and hosting anything at all. You can get to Zapier MCP from the link on the screen right now. And that is what we're going to use in this video. Oh, and one other thing. You can use MCP with basically any AI agent that needs to connect to a third party service. In this example, I'm actually gonna keep things really basic and use a single agent where all we're doing is answering a question effectively. It's the default customer support agent. But again, if you have a massive multi-agent setup, MCP is probably honestly a great choice for you too. All right, let me jump over to Zapier MCP and let's get our MCP server set up. All right, so this is Zapier MCP. Again, not the same as normal Zapier. It lets us create an MCP server with access to all the tools available on Zapier. Now I'm gonna create a new MCP server. And when I'm asked to choose a client, I'm gonna choose other, and I'm just gonna leave a default name. You can give your agent server a name if you want. Let's create an MCP server. And the first thing we have to do when thinking about MCP is, well, what tools do I actually wanna give my agent access to? So for this example, I'm gonna go and give my agent access to Slack. It's a tool not available natively on VoiceFlow, but I have a really killer use case. I want my agent to automatically send a message to my team's internal Slack channel if the agent can't answer a question. That way we can go and ask stuff to the knowledge base when it's missing. Okay, so first up, let's add access to a Slack tool. So I'm gonna click add tool and I'm gonna choose Slack. Now, it might be really tempting to click this add all Slack tools button, but Hey, I would recommend probably not doing that. Again, you, you kind of want to give your agent access to only the stuff it needs access to. And on VoiceOS end again, we can choose what tools we're going to give our agent access to. If you don't need to give it access to every tool, just don't. I just need my agent to be able to go and send messages. So let's go and say send channel message. If my agent only has access to sending messages, there's zero chance I'm accidentally going to leak internal Slack messages, which is great. Okay. Now on Zapier MCP, there's an additional little setup stack I can do. Not all tools to create MCP servers will have this, but I can configure each endpoint. And I can actually choose if I wanna preset certain values, if I wanna go and make my AI generate all of them. For example, I only want to be able to send messages to a specific channel. So let me go and set a specific value for this field. Let's only allow our agent to send messages to the We Love Customers channel. And there's a bunch of other things. I do want to be able to go and have AI generate the message text, which is great. And there's a bunch of defaults here. I can send as a bot. Let's go and set all of defaults. And I'll just send a zap here as well. But yeah, don't feel like you should have everything set to let AI generate it. Because actually, you don't always want that. All right, there we go. I've gone and set a mostly use default or don't include, but I am letting my AI agent generate that message text. Perfect. So I'll now save and that's it. No, no, like that's actually it. To connect my MCP server to VoiceFlow, all I need is a MCP server URL. And I can conveniently get that from this connect option. So let's click here and let's grab this server URL. Now Zappy is giving us a warning, but I'm gonna give you the same warning. Be careful about sharing these URLs. You know, it has access to all of the tools that your agent needs. And if someone else gets access to those tools then you're probably gonna have a really bad day. All right, now we've got our URL in our clipboard. Let's jump back over to VoiceFlow. All right, here we are. And connecting MCP is super simple. You'll see in the tools sidebar here, there's this beautiful MCP option. If we give it a click, we can create an MCP tool. We can give our server a name. We can call it anything. I'm just gonna call it my Slack server, but again, call it whatever you want. 
And then you can enter the server URL. This is what I just copied from Zapier. And again, if you're self hosting a server, then your URL is going to be provided by wherever you're hosting it, right? But with Zapier, we're just given URL. Now, some MCP servers do require authentication. This is often done using headers. And again, if you're self-hosting, you're going to need to go and do a bit of investigation to see what headers you should set here. You can just manually add them here if you need to pass in some kind of API key or token, for example. But in my case, Zapier does not require any of those headers to be set. So I can just click Add MCP Server. And oh, hey, look, we have the default Zakia tools here, which I'm just gonna ignore. But there is the Slack tool that I gave my MCP server access to. Slack send channel message. And oh yeah, like there's a bunch of fixed parameters, including the channel, which I wanted the messages to be sent to. So let's give it a click and let's see what happens. Aha. Uh -huh. So here's my LLM description. This should look actually pretty familiar to you if you've ever used any tool on VoiceLow before. These are just the instructions on when my agent should use this tool. And just like any other tool, I have input variables and I can capture response as well if you need to get some kind of output. In my case, I don't. So, okay, what are my options? I've got instructions and I've got text. Well, instructions are forgiven for running the tool, that's fine. And text is the messages text. Okay, my agent should go and set those both, I think. I don't wanna preset a message, but I do wanna explain to my agent which text it should include. So I'm gonna say, the message to send to Slack, this should be a summary of the question that the user asked and the answer that couldn't be provided. Now instructions, this is a Zapier MCP thing. If you're not using Zapier MCP, you might not see this, uh, but these are just some instructions for running a tool. And if, if something's missing, then it's Zapier's gonna do some magic basically to work out what should be done. So you can set these instructions if you want. I'm just gonna leave my LLM to just work that out. And finally, LLM description. Your LLM description is actually a really important part of any tool. And as I mentioned earlier, it tells your agent when to use the tool. Most of the time, when you connect an MCP tool, those instructions are gonna be pretty generic. I recommend customizing them to be a great fit for your specific agent. Let me write a great one now. So there you go. There's a basic but pretty decent LLM description. Send a summary message to Slack about the questions the AI agent can answer not just a message, but what type of message. And when do we trigger this tool? We trigger it when the user asks a question you couldn't answer. Super clear, super direct. That's what we wanna see in the LLM descriptions. There's one other place as well we need to include a reference to this tool. And that is of course, our big prompt right here, these instructions. Because if we don't tell our agent to use the tool inside the instructions or prompt, then it probably won't do that. Oh, I have this scenario handling section here. Okay, let's add a new scenario. And let's say, if the agent can't answer a question, apologize to the user and express that you understand their frustration. Use the Slack send channel message tool to send a summary of the question and missing data for the answer to the team. And then let the user know that their question has been escalated internally and you hope to have an answer soon. Now, of course, how you prompt your agent is gonna depend on exactly what you're building and exactly what tools you're using. You can kind of see here what I'm doing. I'm connecting my tool, inside the tool, I'm saying how everything works. And I'm going back to my overall agent and I'm saying, hey, this is a new tool. I've included an instruction manual for you, but you really need to use it in these scenarios. So that is just the first pass. Let's now try my agent. And I will say proactively, you're probably gonna wanna come back and just like with any tool, refine how your agent is told how to use it as you iterate. But for now, let's just go try our agent. So let's click run and try out our AI agent. Let's start with a question our agent definitely knows the answer to. Can you tell me about Acme Solutions products. Now, this information is in our agent's prompt. It definitely knows about the products offered by Acme Solutions. We have free tools, Taskmaster Pro, Secure Shield, and Business Flow for this fictional company. Well, let's run a curveball. Let's say there's a new product that's been released, but our agent doesn't know about it yet. Tell me about TrackFlow. It's a brand new tool, but let's see how our agent handles this. I've told it to tell me about TrackFlow. 
and is thinking, hmm, I don't see it in our product lineup. Uh, are you sure you're talking about the right thing? And it's thinking and it's thinking, but it couldn't answer that question. And we can see here, there is a MCP tool called, and it's our MCP tool, Slack send channel message. All right, well, let's go and check Slack. And there we go, customer inquiry, asked about track flow and it wasn't found. And we need clarification if this is a new or discontinued product or an alternate name for an existing product. So that is an incredibly basic MCP setup. We're just sending a message into Slack if we cannot answer a question. MCP is a super versatile tool. It lets you go and connect to so many third party services. It's so much quicker than manually linking APIs once everything's set up. And it is a great way to make sure your agent is on the same page as you about how it should use tools, when it should use tools, and which tools it has access to. Let me know in the comments down below what you end up building with MCP and Zapier. I'd love to know. And keep an eye out for future videos because I'm definitely going to keep playing around with MCP and see where I can include it in some future templates.